Hi, welcome back to Mini Book Chats. My name is Kate, and today I'm going to do an impromptu video because I've just found out they're doing a huge library sale. It's about 30 minutes from me, and they have 70,000 books. So I'm going to take you along and see what we find. So this library sale is running from yesterday they did a preview sale for members and then today they're doing a sale tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday they're doing one and then next weekend as well and on the last day next Sunday everything's half price. So all the books are hardbacks, they said 70,000 books and most of them were hardcover. The hardcovers are around $3 and the paperbacks are $1 to $2. So let's go look around. <laughs> Stay another minute, let me hold you. You might be late for work, that's okay. Day every day I get to know you, and all your flaws are nothing to change. I love it when you wake up, freckles with no makeup. I just wanna take up all your time and stay. But humor mixed with perfume takes over the bedroom. I was built to love you, you know. Is there anybody else there? Is there anybody else like you? Anybody else like you? I think I found an And the reason I'm filming what I got at the book sale a few days later is because I had a bit of a panic about the amount of books that I brought and decided to have a go through my bookshelves and get rid of some books um, I'd read and I didn't really want to keep to make room for these books and also to alleviate my guilt of acquiring so many books. Sometimes I get very concerned I might be turning into a hoarder. My granddad was a terrible hoarder. Um, so I just like to make myself feel better and release some books into the world before I bring some more books into the house. So I'll go through and show you what I got. Um, I mostly got classics. I'm getting more into reading classics, but I'm also am looking for to get some classics I've already read because the reason I read them was they were very available when I was little. My mum and dad kind of had them around the house, so I would like the same position for my kids, hoping they'll read some like classic books as well. And I also picked up some general fiction, some of which I've already read, and I also picked up one horror book. So a bit of variety. I will go through the books, the um, general fiction books I brought first, and and then we'll do classics. So the first one I got was the hardcover version. Oh, still got the price on it. Two dollars this cost me. So the books were actually cheaper than I thought they were going to be, and the hardcovers were a dollar. Shh, shut up! It's so loud. 
Um, the hardcovers were mostly a dollar. The paperbacks were at 50 cents. It did vary slightly. This one, for example, was $2. Um, and I just loved this as a hardcover with the like beveled edges. Yeah, is that right? Beveled edges? I'm not sure. Um, so I, if you've ever seen my video where I talked about reading Peronessi, I did say I don't think I'll ever read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. However, since then, I have thought on Piranesi more and it stuck with me so much. So I'm not saying it's a book I loved, but it really did, the story did stick with me. So I do think I'm gonna give this one a chance. So this book is um, by Susanna Clarke. It is about two magicians in 1806. Um, Mr. Norrell is an established magician and Jonathan Strange, I believe that's the way around, is a um, junior um, magician. Edition? He's a maths wizard. Um, and this book is quite long. It is, can you sit down please? Sit down. Okay, sit so right in the middle. Um, 782 pages long. But as I say, previously when I read that, it stuck with me so much. I didn't necessarily love it, but I think maybe I do like her writing style more than I originally realized because of how much that story has stuck with me. So I'm gonna give this one a try eventually, it's huge. Um, I also got The Graceling by Kristen Cashaw. This is one of those books I hear a lot about, especially now that they've just released the fourth in the series. Unfortunately, they did change the, you're very close. They did change the um, cover design on them. But this is about a world where um, people have special powers called graces. I think that's right. Yes, people born with an extreme skill called a grace are feared and exploited. And um, the main character carries a skill even she despises. She has the grace of killing. And I believe it's about her being sort of manipulated and exploited for that skill. So this book has done interestingly for ages and I'm really glad I found it in hardcover. So hopefully it's really, I think there's yeah, four in the series now, which is called A Quartet. Somebody told me that in my bookshelf tour, so I really do appreciate it if that was you. Um, I also got two books in the Call of the Midwife series. Um, I enjoy this as a TV show, it's not like my favourite, but the first couple of series I really, really enjoyed with the original character series. Um, but books about um, early nursing and midwifery, like early 1900s to the 1960s or so, I've read so many books and I love all of them. Um, yes, yeah, so these were by 50 cents each. Shadows of the Workhouse, I think is either the second or the third one. I think a second one. Yeah, it goes Call the Midwife, this one, and Farewell to the East End. Um, and this is the first one. This is obviously the TV tie-in. Unfortunately, they don't have the same spine, but that's fine. My bookshelves are color coordinated. It doesn't make too much difference. And these are both by Jennifer Worth. And these are both, I believe they're set around the 1950s. So really looking forward to reading this. I've been looking for these for ages. For some reason, I've never seen them. I think maybe because they're English, but really looking forward to those. Um, I also found The Orphan Train, which is such a strange book. It's like, they've got the beveled edges and the fold up covers. It's almost like a hardcover, but it's paperback. This is by Christina Baker Klein, and it is about children looking for new homes after the Spanish flu epidemic. Um, between 19, sorry, 1854 and 1929, so-called orphan trains ran regularly from the east coast of the farmlands to the Midwest, carrying thousands of abandoned children whose fates were determined by pure luck. This is following Irish immigrants. So. This sounds like right up my street. Hopefully it's not too sad. If it's too sad, it's going to my mother-in-law because she loves sad books. I don't know why. Um, I, if you watch my channel, you know that I am slightly obsessed with um, Anne of Green Gables. I would like to be Anne of Green Gables. But this is the story of Anne before she became Anne of Green Gables. Anne of wherever she came from. Um, and it's called Before Green Gables by Bud Wilson. And I'd never heard this person, but apparently she's a very like awarded middle grade and young adult author. And this is the story of how she came to be where she ended up. The print in this book is so tiny. That's my only issue with it. This book is quite battered. It's had a life, but I've never seen it before. And I am a big Anne of Green Gables fan. So I would like to read this one. Looking forward to that one. This one was really cheap. I think it was so battered. Um, I also found a um, Lucy Maud Montgomery bind up of books. She's who wrote Anne of Green Gables. Um, this one is The Story Girl, the sequel to The Story Girl, The Golden Road, and The Kill, Kill Many of the Orchard. I'm not familiar with any of these books, but I would like to read other books that um, Ellen Montgomery wrote. When I put this on my bookshelf, I don't know if you can see how much light damage there is on it, I will put it on without the dust jacket. Some of these books came with dust jackets, but I have already taken them off because they were really damaged i'll tell you which ones they were but that will be how it looks on the shelf and i'm really looking forward to reading more in this um author's world this has some original illustrations when it was first published in the um early 1900s i think it says so i'm really looking forward to reading more by this author um, I did find The Little House in Big Woods by um, Laura Ingalls Wilder. I've talked a lot about the issues with these books. There are problems with these books, but I do enjoy having them. They're a nice little slice of history. Um, and this is a slightly different edition than the other ones I have, but I have another one from the series in this edition. So those two will go together. You get the idea. But yes, The Little House in Big Woods is the first one in the Little House in the Prairie series. Um, a book I've already read. I found Shirley Jackson's Haunting Hill House. I really enjoyed this book. I like how ambiguous and ghosty it is. It is about a... Um, kind of a group of people who gathered together at a haunted house 
Um, if I say anything more, it would give away the plot. Most people have seen the TV series now. There is a, one of those unreviewable Netflix stickers on here. I've not seen it. I like the book as it was. I'm not really planning to watch anything else. I'm going to have Netflix. Are we the end of the Netflix? Maybe. I also found, talking of scary, um, The House of Lees. I found this for a dollar. I literally picked this up in a bookstore the other day and was like, I can't justify spending $22 on a paperback. I just can't do it. I can't do it. And then I found it for a dollar. So exciting. So this is a book written, I don't know if you can see, in like very like mixed media kind of writing style, um, about a, I think a man finds it, and it's the story of a haunting a house. Yeah, it's about the haunting of a house, and it's um, I, a bunch of papers gathered together from somebody who either lived at the house, something like that. I don't know too much about it, and I kind of want to go into it blind, but I'm hoping to have this on my Halloween um, or October TBR, so you might have already seen me hold this up, but I'm really looking forward to reading it. It is available on Kindle, but I don't know if I'd get the same reading experience on Kindle, so I'm glad I found it so cheap, because it's going to be fun to read, or terrifying. Could be terrifying to read. We'll see. Next lot are all classics, which I will go through with you now. How many books did I buy? Let's look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, that's a lot of books. Uh, uh, overall, uh, my husband brought a few books and my son brought a couple of books. He brought, in case you're wondering, Iron Man, Mickey Mouse and a book about a lighthouse. Um, that's my husband, not my son. Uh, so for just my books, I think it's about, about $22, which I don't think is that bad. Um, and as I said, I've got rid of the same amount of books that have come in, so I'm not too upset. First of all, I found a uh, Great Expectation by Charles Dickens, which is my which is my favourite Dickens book. We studied this one for GCC English and I actually genuinely enjoyed it. Um, what is that? Oh, how strange. There's an insert in this book with the history of um, Charles Dickens. Interesting. This is the book kind of just following the life of a um, boy through his life. And the main thing I remember from this book very clearly is Miss Havisham. So, if you've read this book or if you've seen the movie, she said, character's hard to forget. Miss Havisham, a rich woman living in seclusion, the strangest lady I've ever seen or I ever will see. So yeah, she's the main, she is a um, abandoned, she was abandoned at the, uh, what's the word? Jilted at the aisle. So if you haven't read this one and you're interested in getting into classics, I do genuinely recommend this book. It, as far as I can remember, it's been a while since I read it. I really enjoyed it, even when I was younger reading it. Fun book. Um, I also found My Cousin Rachel, which is the Daphne du Maurier my mum has been on at me to read for ages. And I'm glad I found it because I'm slowly gathering all of um, Daphne du Maurier's books in the like original hardcovers. So I'm glad I have this one to add to my collection. And I'm hoping to read this one really soon because it's my mum's second favourite after Rebecca, which I have read. I also found a really lovely edition of The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. This is about, I believe, the Queen's Guards. Um, in pre-revolutionary France. I have read this book, but I think I read the abridged version. I did have the abridged version, it's actually my mum, so I'm gonna give it back to her. And um, I don't know if I've ever read the whole version, so I really want to, because I remember loving it, and I've seen the movies, and there's, there was used to be a TV cartoon when I was little, it was based on these series, and I love that too. So looking forward to reading this again, and hopefully all the way through this time, rather than abridged. And it is almost 600 pages, so it's definitely a longer book, but really looking forward to getting this one seen, and I really love the design on the front. It's like purple with a burgundy and then um, cross swords between gold and the purple again. So really lovely edition of that one. Um, I also found The House on the Strand by Daphne du Maurier and my mum said this is one of her favourites of Daphne du Maurier as well. Um, yeah, so I, I actually don't know what this one's about but I'm going to go into it without knowing. When I read the synopsis of Rebecca being like a thriller, um, I think it didn't explain it so I'm just going to not look this one up before I read it. My mum said it was really, really good. Um, I also found Kidnap. This did have a dust jacket on. I do have the dust jacket. I put it somewhere safe, but it was completely torn to pieces. You wouldn't have known what it said or anything about it. But Kidnapped is a book that I read a lot when I was little. I think I had the children's version of it. It is a pirate story. Maybe this is where my obsession with pirates came from, reading a lot of these books when I was little. Um, this is another Robert Louis Stevenson book. Um, he is most known for writing Treasure Island. I believe it's his biggest one. But I love the colour of this one as well. I also got, this had a dust jacket on it, again it was really torn, but it is Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, which I think I've read but I would like to reread, but look at their little feet, isn't that just the cutest thing ever? I really love the end papers in this one, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one soon. The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. I would like my life to be considered strange and surprising adventures, so that's a nice way to describe it, but I love Billy. 
And finally, I did, my um, father-in-law was in town, and he's American, obviously, and I asked him if he'd ever read a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, and he said he hadn't, but I decided to get it anyway, because I'd never read a Mark Twain, and I am a big, like, round table kind of fan, I like stories set in that era, so I'm going to give it a go. It is about a man, if I understand this right, because I've never read it, but I believe it's about, oh, look at him with his little hat. Um, it's about a man who time travels from whenever this was written back to King Arthur's court and being confused and so as you would be. This is from 1984. Oh, it smells like it's from 1984. So yes, so looking forward to reading all of those. Glad to have some more classics in my collection and want to get either reread them or read them for the first time. Very excited to read um, House of Leaves, anything in the end. I'm very excited to read all of them. I didn't pick up books that I wasn't super excited about. There were 70,000 books at this book sale, and I could have come home with probably a thousand of them. So I'm actually proud I only came home with this many. I really enjoyed going. If you, um, I will link below the website where I found this library sale, and you can, you're moving the camera, babe. Um, I will link below, Sherlock, you're so big. Um, I will link below the website where I found this, and you can look up if there's any library sales near you, because that's how I found it, and I'm really glad I went. And my brother-in-law lives in North Carolina, and he says there's a big one there every year. It was cancelled this year because of COVID. Hopefully it's on next year. And I would like to go to that too because it was super, super fun. And I say for $22, very happy with what I found. So thank you so much for watching. Please like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you've read any of these or there's any classics that... You are moving the camera. I'm moving the camera. Um, please comment down below if there's any classics you're looking forward to getting to soon or that I should look into. And I will see you again very soon. Bye bye. Subscribe if you'd like to. Say subscribe. Or don't, your choice. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay.